All right, so the uh, fly that I'm going to be tying today is a pattern that I came up with when I first started tying. Um, it's basically an emerger pattern. What I have on the vise right now, I start off with a size 6 hook. Uh, now this isn't anything fancy. This is uh, some hooks that were on sale at Walmart. Um, you see they're size 6. It says uh, used for live bait. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and tie it. Uh, for this emerger pattern, uh, what you're going to end up with is a really buggy looking fly, so hopefully it'll attract some fish for you. Uh, so I went ahead and laid down a, uh, some black thread on the hook, and then I cut off some pheasant tails, and we're going to go ahead and tie in a tail here. And you want about six or uh, seven fibers uh, for your tail. Go ahead and cut the remainder of that off. Uh, next, what I'm going to be tying in is some foam. Um, this is about half a centimeter in thickness. What I've done to the tip is I've cut uh, a little V into it, and I'm just going to tie that in place here. You want to tie it down a little bit and then start working your way um, up the hook. You want to tie it down pretty tight because I do like to pull on the foam just a little bit as I'm um, adding in a segment here. There we go. And just one tie around is fine. We'll wind our way up. And you want to try uh, to get the segments as even as possible. So if you go ahead and tie it in and you're not happy with the way it looks, um, you can always just undo it and play around with the positioning, make sure that it's even. Uh, now normally I don't have this much difficulty, but with the camera being right in front of me, it is a little awkward to try and move around. Now you can certainly um, have kind of a tapered look uh, with this foam body. What I mean by that is towards the eye the segments can be a little uh, thicker, they can be uh, wider, and then as you go towards the tail they can kind of taper down to smaller segments. Um, so you can go ahead and kind of make it your own if, if you want to go ahead and do that. I like to keep them uh, pretty consistent, just the same size. We'll probably put in one or two more segments here. You want to leave a good amount of space towards the eye because you're going to be tying in uh, two different types of hackle and then a partridge feather. So you want to leave um, a good amount of space. I think we can go one more segment and then we'll have to stop. Okay, tie it in real nice and tight. Work your thread forward nice and tight. And then come in with your scissors and get rid of this piece of foam here. And you can save it and use it uh, for another tie later on. Alright, then you're just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. Alright, so the first piece of hackle that I'm going to be tying in um, is some uh, brown hackle. It's not a very long piece of hackle, I don't want to use too much of it. 
Uh, the reason I'm using two different colors is just um, just because I like the way that it looks. Um, so you can see a very short piece of hackle that I'm working with. I'll go ahead and prepare the feather, pull all the fibers back. And we're going to catch in the tip, make a couple nice tight wraps, and then we'll come in behind and uh, trim away. Take our hackle pliers, make sure we worked our thread forward here, and I'm catching a few of those fibers, that's fine. This isn't uh, going to be a very neat looking fly. It's going to come out looking kind of messy and, and like I said it's going to be very buggy looking uh, which is exactly why um, I like it. Um, it doesn't mimic any one thing in particular uh, but because of the way it looks uh, they can mistake it for a lot of different types of, uh, of insects. But if I had to say it looked close to something it would probably be an emerger just because of the wings that we're going to put in later. Alright, so go ahead and catch that in. I'm going to pull these back nice and tight and clean up here. Next what I'm going to tie in is uh, another piece of hackle. Now this one's a little bit longer. The fibers on this piece are a little bit longer as well. So they're going to shadow over that smaller piece that we just tied in. And we'll prepare this the same way. We'll pull the feathers back or the fibers back a little. Go ahead and tie in the tip here. Now I don't know if you saw that but the thread has a tendency of jumping forward. What you can do is take your bobbin kind of roll it uh, in your fingers counterclockwise and then when you go to dub it actually you can see how it jumps backwards instead of jumping forwards so uh, there's a little trick for you there and you want to grab that in and then we'll cut out this part here Okay, and again, take our pliers, grab onto it, and we'll start wrapping it around. And again, you want to pull back on the fibers as you're turning the, the feather around the hook. Oops, I'm going to drop my pliers, grab another one here, alright, we'll give it one more turn, and then we'll start cleaning up. I am a little close to the eye of the hook. Uh, normally I'd like to stay a little bit further back, but in this case I kind of went a bit too close. I crowded the eye. Uh, so whenever you're tying this pattern, uh, just give yourself a little bit more room to work with. I'll go ahead and cut this out. And just like we did before, go ahead and pull everything back. Try to clean up our space here. I'm 
All right. So that's good right there. Uh, now for the last piece, uh, what I'm going to be using is a partridge uh, feather. And uh, this is um, just your standard partridge feather. And what I'd like to do is I'll grab onto the tip here back on these fibers you want it separated evenly pull everything back here and then what I'll do is I'll take this segment as it's bending down and I'll lay it right over top of the fly I want it to be the length of the fly that's how long the wings are going to be so once you have it like that, you want to pinch it in place, hold it real nice and firm. Take your thread, make a couple nice wraps to hold everything in place. And then what I like to do is pull back on this. And if you need to, go ahead and use your nail, push back on the feathers just a little, that's fine. Okay, take your whip finish. Okay. And we'll go ahead and cut our thread here. And now to get rid of this big bulky piece on top, nice pair of sharp scissors. We'll cut the stem first. Okay, and get rid of that. And then these fibers, give them a gentle little tug. Get as close to the base as you can. And then go ahead and give them a little snip. Okay, and then we'll do the same to this side. All right. Now to make this, uh, to turn this into wings, what you want to do is come here in the back. I'm going to split the feather, and then as you're holding on to both sides, just pull it apart. I'm going to do this real careful. go. And then this remaining uh, remainder right here, you can just take it and snip it off. Okay. Uh, now what I like to do to finish this fly off is I'll take a little bit of super glue just at the tip just to kind of reinforce everything into place. And you're not going to use much at all, just a little dab. That should do it. Alright, and that's basically uh, the fly. It's, like I said, it's real buggy. It floats uh, really well, especially with the foam body and all the hackle you've got uh, during the summer and springtime. Uh, I, like, I like to use this fly when I'm out uh, prospecting in newer waters. And to see if anything will take it on the surface. Um, it's definitely got me a lot of fish uh, during the course of my, my time uh, fishing. So anyways, I uh, hope you like it. Uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll be posting more of these videos. And as always, thank you very much uh, for watching my videos. And good luck out there.